I'll, I just want to discuss, right? One of the things that you are talking about is, let's say as a designer, one of the things that I look at first is how a website looks. Uh, and you talked about themes in Shopify, but how easy is it to uh, design or build my own, like if I have created my own custom design, how easy is it to implement it? And what are the limitations that I might come across whenever, when I'm trying to implement that? Definitely. If you have any custom built design, you can definitely implement it very easily. You just have to import the same into Shopify's library and you'll be able to use it. And since if you are implementing a design that has been created by you, you might be aware about the import and export functionality that works in all of the platforms. So you just have to implement uh, import the uh, particular theme that you have built into the library. It will be converted into the liquid format because Shopify has a, a different language coming into picture when we build Shopify yeah. store that is liquid. So it will convert it into liquid and then you'll be able to use it definitely. People definitely buy themes from different uh, platforms as well, different uh, websites where they find a better uh, custom design themes for them, them which mm. is not compatible initially with Shopify, but they can definitely right. convert it into Shopify compatible format and they can import it back into the Shopify library. So Shopify has given open options to all of them. Sure. Uh, but uh, in terms of this, right, doesn't Shopify still have a certain structure that you have to follow? Like you have a homepage, you have category, Heather. Like what if I want to I have a sale and I want to create a custom landing page? Yes, definitely. Does this, like all of, okay. Definitely. And what about, see, again, the question that I also wanted to go back to was, what are the parts that are difficult to customize or should not be modified because Shopify has a certain structure for that that we need to follow? Correct. So uh, basically, see limitations. Uh, I would I would cover it in such a way where limitations is something which is already available on all the platforms. But the structure that Shopify follows do not restrict you to do anything. Suppose if there is only uh, there are structures available in sections, you have to build your sections there. In sections, you can do any of the things. For example, if you're building a custom section for you, you can yes. build anything into that particular section. If you want to keep it an image text, you can definitely do that. Shopify does not restrict the uh, a basic structure, the one structure that you are making. The overall structure is definitely restricted. It has to be in liquid and uh, uh, the pages that you are building should be from uh, uh, Shopify's uh, new pages section where, where they're allowing you to create new landing pages. So everything can be done there. I don't think there is any limitation coming up for the structure point of view. Um, mm -hmm. Also, if, if I may add, um, so Shopify gives you access to uh, edit HTML and CSS. So let's say if you want to build your own template, you can do that. Uh, regarding mm -hmm. limitation, I think there are a few limitations that we sh uh, that, uh, any merchant or developer should be aware of. Uh, first thing, let's say if you are on normal Shopify plan, let's say if you are on uh, $29, $79 or $299 plan, you, you are not, you will not be able, you will not have access to checkout, checkout uh, stage. Uh, if you want to make any modifications around those areas, you will not be able to do it because checkout is restricted in these plans. But if you are on Shopify plus plan, which is the enterprise level plan, you also get access to checkout and you can do more, much more things. Let's say if you want to edit the, the, the edit checkout in some form or the other, you can do that. that. This is for security purpose that they don't allow access to checkout because they want all their orders to, uh, you know, they don't want, uh, if the checkout gets hacked or something like that, then the payments and everything can get hacked. So they, uh, Shopify does not allow mm -hmm. you to do any checkout customization. Uh, the other uh, customization that I've seen that, uh, you know, some, some, uh, uh, some, uh, I would say that let's say some, there's a particular uh, structure to the URL. Of the of, of all Shopify stores, so uh, so let's say any product page will always contain slash products in the URL. Any category page will always contain slash collections in the URL. That's 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 how Shopify has been designed. Um, it's you might say uh, it can be good bad for SEO. Uh, there are mixed opinions because you know, uh, uh, let's say the like Google is becoming more, uh, no, some, some, some Google SEO uh, uh, consultants might say, okay, you should have shorter uh, URL structure, etc. Those slash collection and slash products add some characters to the URLs. Uh, apart from that, I think because Shopify allows you to access HTML, CSS, you can build your own type, any type of landing page that you want. There's, there's not, not much uh, restrictions around that. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess I'll, maybe we can dig into that later, but uh, let's, let's talk about the, uh, okay. One more question I had, right. You have 
a simple website that you're starting to build, but you also mentioned integrations and additional apps that you can add. At what type or what kind of functionality, like what, among the hundreds of websites that you have built out, right? What are the common integrations that you have seen or you have realized that would be needed? As And at what point of complexity would that come in? Uh, that would be one. Uh, and the second would be normally in, an, in a website that you're building on Shopify, what would be a reasonable number of apps to add? Because, uh, okay, I think what would, be a, what would be a reasonable number of applications or integrations to add into your website before it gets too heavy or slows down? So uh, basically, uh, there are a couple of apps that are really important for you when you're starting to do something. If you want multiple logistic integration, see Shopify offers one logistic integration directly into the Shopify okay. store. But there might what, be... Could you clarify what, what you mean by that? Yeah. So suppose if you are using one of the logistic partners to ship your products. For example, I'm using right. Clutter as my logistic partner to ship my product. But sure. there are people who are using local deliveries, multiple local deliveries to okay. ship all the products, to cover all the pin codes that are available in India. So for that, you might need one extra third-party app where you can integrate all the logistic partner at once and you can ship all the products. So in that sure. case, you need one of the plugin. It is not difficult at all because Shopify has built everything DIY kind. You have to, yeah. you can do it everything by yourself. So you just have to right. click on add app and the integration is done. You just have to approve it from the admin section because there are uh, uh, staff accounts coming into picture. When you create one of the Shopify stores, it is created by one of the admin accounts. And with every account, there are multiple staff accounts coming in. So yeah. app can be added by any of the person, but it has to be approved by admin only. Okay. That we need this app. So once the app is approved, you can open it and there is documentation available for the onboarding of all the apps. Definitely people can follow the documentation and it is completely DIY. Most of the apps yeah. are DIY. There are apps which require some of the assistance. In that case, you can directly reach out to the app developers, not Shopify. You can directly reach out to the app developers who are into ecosystem. They'll help you out. And uh, talking about the important apps that would come into picture, that also depends on how you want to create your online store because there are people who install Wishlist app in the starting. Wishlist is something uh, which people want to customize. So there is already multiple customized Wishlist app uh, available on Shopify. They don't want to build a custom Wishlist section for them. They readily integrate the uh, one of the plugin available on Shopify. Most of the people uh, uh, integrate the returns app. Where, because the returns is something which is not available on Shopify. Shopify has uh, uh, no return management solution into picture. So for that, there are multiple apps into picture. So people into apparel industry, because apparel has a lot of returns coming in. So they integrate the uh, return app. So it is based on the category that you are working with. If, sure. if, if you are in apparel industry, the section and the uh, number of apps would be different for you. But if you are in uh, a different electronic industry, then it would be different for you. So it is completely, right. it depends on what your uh, industry sure. is and what app would suit you better. Okay. So what are the implications of using apps? For example, one of the things that you mentioned, right? That it allows other businesses to build apps. Shopify gives that option for businesses to build apps and integrate into the marketplace. But that also implies that uh, using these apps has certain has a certain expense, right? Is it uh, maybe trans for, for every transaction or on, the, or on a monthly basis? Like how does it work? And... How expensive can it get if I, when we are using, multi, let's say, logistics and returns and maybe something for the front end in terms of customization or whatever else? Definitely, it starts free of cost. Like there are many apps which are free of cost as well, but mm -hmm. it goes to a, a very high extent also because while you are scaling, you might need products that could help you scale. Because right. when, when you're already reaching out a level where you are selling more than 200, 300 products every day of a, a very high amount, then definitely there are multiple things coming into picture that you need to take care of. And everything cannot be provided by any of the platforms. And then what people do is people build custom things for that, which is a very one-time high cost. You have to spend a one-time high cost for that, for building the, uh, that particular feature. And to manage that, it becomes complex because things getting changed every day. Technology is getting changed every day. If you are getting mm -hmm. one app from any of the app stores, uh, from the app developers, they'll keep them updated. But when you will try to update all of the things every time, then that might end end up very costly for you, right? So it ranges from free to a very high level, uh, uh, where I can say more than thousand dollars. Also, there is there are app available for more than six hundred, seven hundred dollars as well. But that completely depends on the volume that you are doing. 
most of the apps are volume based if you are selling 100 products then the uh, prices would be different there are uh, a pricing structure pricing plan made by shopify developers only they have provided multiple pricing plans for example there is one annual pricing plan there is one time pricing plan there is a recurring pricing plan that you can build you can also build a custom pricing plan for any of the customers right you mentioned right if i am building something completely custom i need to maintain it and make sure that it is updated uh, but uh, how how reliable are the apps that are there in the marketplace that okay i use this app uh, what is how do i know if one year from now i am going to be able to keep using or do i need to change or use something else so uh, i'm i'm you i as a customer i might be selecting shopify considering the apps that are there uh, for certain functionality but what if that app is discontinued so how do i know which apps are likely to be reliable like do we have information about that yes definitely there are uh, reviews available you can check it yeah. out like most of the apps have pre trials hmm. while you are using any of the things you can definitely refer the reviews that is coming in uh, shopify yeah. promotes couple of apps in the featured section you'll be able to get it from their staff pick uh, uh, section is there where they promote they have different sections for the app for example you can see app which is worthy to use is a section on mm -hmm. shopify app store you can get on to that there are sections which is called useful apps in india mm -hmm. so this is the way they have categorized the app section where you, they uh, list the apps which is uh, actually important for the customers they uh, put it into featured section the app which are doing very great who are receiving very great reviews they put it in the uh, a section which it says app worth uh, using for and there are multiple sections for that so since for one single thing there are multiple apps available you have options to try and use you can go ahead sure. with trying multiple apps and then decide which suits you better it's just like ghadi pair istemal kare fir vishwas kare sure uh, so uh, i also read about uh, shopify plus or shopify gold right uh do you recommend customers using that and at what point would some and would that be useful at what point is something like that useful right uh, i take this so first of all see uh, shopify is very smart but they do is they charge 29 dollars in the basic plan but they also charge 2% as a transaction fee on 29 dollars plan uh on 79 dollar plan then they charge 1% transaction fee so uh, so that is on top of the credit card on fees, top right? yeah yeah it, in india Actually, in yeah. US, actually, it parts it becomes part of the Shopify also acts as a payment gateway, uh, and it uh, and it uh, includes the payment processing fee also. But in India and other countries where they sh Shopify is not acting as a payment gateway, these are additional charges uh, charged by Shopify. So sure. you know, uh, let's say from twenty nine to seventy nine dollar plan, fifty dollar car difference. If you think about it, as as soon as you start making more than three point five, uh, as soon as your revenue crosses three point five lakhs per month. it makes sense for you to pay 79 dollars and 1% transaction fee similarly as, as soon as as soon as you start uh, crossing 35 lakhs figure per month it makes sense for you to go to advanced plan of 299 dollars uh, and and uh, just pay 0.5% uh, transaction fee and then similarly if you as soon as you start moving uh, 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 like if you are going to know more than 1.6 crore or something like that then the trans, uh, on shopify plus you just pay 0.25% transaction fee 0.25% so uh, at, if you are doing those those, those many uh, transaction etc the, the, uh, the transaction fees goes down if you if you are on a higher plan the other thing is also if you go to the higher plans you get some more features so let's say on 29 dollar plan you can only have two staff accounts but on 79 dollar plans you get ability to sell uh, something called gift cards virtual car cards to your stores so that people can purchase gift cards and gift it to friends Uh, and also you can uh, add five staff accounts on on 299 dollar plans you can have more staff accounts and you also get additional some additional features um, on shopify plus you get even more automations and uh, some uh, even more functionalities like you can have unlimited staff accounts you can create five stores or 10 stores that you can shopify plus uh, let's say if you want to create a separate geo, geo store for particular location us for let's say for us you want to create a subdomain with local content local pricing as a stuff you can create sub stores uh, in the shopify plus plan for being one fee you can have 10 uh, 10 uh, 10 different stores for different geographies you also get power of automation so uh, so as soon as you cross uh, let's say uh, one uh, as soon as you are doing 1.5 crore a month uh, you you need a lot of automations like 
um, you want a certain emails to go to certain team as soon as something happens. So let's say if somebody has given us one star review, you know, uh, your customer service team should be able should should get notification or this has happened. Or let's say somebody, if as soon as you get an order which is high risk, you want your operation team to receive a notification or some in some form, let's say in Google Sheet or any email, etc. All these automations, uh, Shopify has built some advanced automations for enterprise Shopify plus plan. So I think as soon as you reach those uh, revenue numbers, it makes sense for you to uh, upgrade to Shopify plus. One of the things that's also been happening quite a bit, right? This uh, rise of Jamstack, rise of uh, headless CMS and headless uh, e-commerce platforms. Uh, if I want to, if I already have a attractive or fancy website and I want to integrate a shopping cart into my system, uh, like let's say if I want to build a very rich uh, UI like Apple or Apple or Apple website, right? There, I can't, a website like that would not be easy to implement directly on Shopify. So if I wanted to integrate shopping cart functionality into an app that I already have, uh, how easy or what, what is, how, how is it possible with Shopify and how would, uh, what plan would I need to be able to do? Um, all right. So let's say Shopify has, has some tools available to create, to integrate uh, Shopify backend to these different uh, channels. So. Shopify is something called storefront APIs, which you can use to create a uh, custom backend for uh, uh, for these. Uh, and also, uh, Shopify is something, some integration with uh, uh, Unity. So let's say if you have a game and you want to have, uh, you want to, let's say, have, you want to sell some merchandise on this game platform, uh, apps, etc. You can use Shopify, uh, uh, Unity APIs to, and, and SDK, etc. to get, to build some a solution around it. Um, the, the the process is same. So the front end is powered by whatever uh, uh, so whatever system that you are using. The back end, uh, where you know the management of catalog, uh, running, creating a feed, uh, order management, etc., will be powered by Shopify. Uh, you can you know uh, you can uh, disconnect front end and back end using uh, these APIs already available by Shopify. Shopify has created some tools to help you do that. Okay. So what, um, basically what plans or what, at what point would I be able to use functionality like that? Uh, it's what available on all plans, all plans. So 29, you can do this on 29, 17. So I can, 29. I can build, like I can integrate the API even on the $29 plan? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. The other thing is also, we need to know that like, like normally, uh, people who will use Shopify, I mean to say about uh, since you had like a question around headless, when should you use headless solution, etc. Normally, the merchants who are using Shopify are merchants who don't want to who are uh, who don't want to invest in tech tech stack. Actually, they they right. have capabilities in branding, sourcing products, and uh, other stuff. They don't they they, they 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 necessarily don't want to become a tech company. They want to become more like a consumer company. Sure. Uh, so, so, uh, so, uh, generally, I've seen that you know, uh, um, <clears throat> I, would, I would like to say that let's say these merchants they are they, they no, normally they they are looking for a simple solution to actually uh, sell this product. They are not looking for complex uh, interactions, okay. etc. But even having said that, there are tools available on Shopify which you can use to build those uh, interactions and those type of front ends. Sure. So in the standard, like a lot, we have a lot of different e-commerce uh, uh, stores in India, right? Uh, especially some of the larger ones. At what point, like, like many, more, most, many of them have their own custom or they use different platforms. Like, what would be one? What would be the reasons to not like what? Would, based on the customers who have come to you or on the current uh, people in the uh, current players in the market what would be reasons to not use Shopify? Like one of them was if your functionality doesn't fit, but at what scale or not, not just talking about the type of business, like a marketplace doesn't fit or a subscription service doesn't fit, but are there other things to other factors like maybe scale or control? Like what are the other factors that you would consider for using or not using Shopify? Or I guess maybe let me put it this way. What would be the most complex website that you have seen or largest website that you have seen that is using Shopify right now? Uh, 
see definitely mm, yeah. we have been looking at larger websites for example you can see headphone zone it's a very uh, big website you can see raymonds you can see lenscart you can see fanhood of book my show to sell merchandises they are there himalaya mm. is using shopify and there are multiple more big creme clients who are using shopify right now so by forgetting this that why they are using and why some people are not using that would be uh, uh, difficult for us to answer but to answer your question that why the people are using shopify they don't want to get into the basic hygiene things they don't want to get uh, into the security things where they had to check multiple times if there is any issue coming in they don't want to uh, get into the right. uptime the bandwidth uh, thing again and again to see if the uh, sales volume is high they need to increase the volume if uh, it is not very much uh, uh, high or if the revenue is not coming up they need to decrease the bandwidth and there are multiple hygienes that you have to follow while running a, a, a website they don't want to take care of sales only they don't want to get into all these stuffs and mm -hmm. even they want to hire one expert for this will take care of all these things people who come on shopify generally approach uh, in such a way where they hire one expert keep their shopify's technical things with them and they focus on sell uh, uh, selling the products they focus uh, mainly on sales part which is important for an e-commerce merchant i believe okay so let us say that i already have a store uh, i'm running on woocommerce or on magento or on spree or something like that uh, how easy uh, what 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 are the implications if i say i i am considering shopify and i would like to move to shopify uh, how easy is it to migrate uh, and what would be this what are there any specific implications that are there when moving to shopify all right i'll take this so see normally when you are migrating you need you you are, you want to do first of all content migration product migration you want to migrate the old orders data migration you also want to migrate customers and sometimes you want to want to retain the old design that you have these are the broad uh, things and also you want to uh, make sure that the let's say if you are migrating to shopify you want to know where, you want to make sure that the old integrations that you had the old methods of working etc still stays uh, you know let's say you can still work with the same payment gateway or same uh, same ticketing solution or so customer support solution etc while moving to shopify these are the main considerations that you would like to see whether you can migrate the whole content orders etc and also whether you can uh, have the design that you want and whether you can use the same integrations or you will you require new partners or new type of uh, uh, solutions to do the other bits uh, it's um, about the ease of migration i think uh, uh, it, it depends actually from migration to migration but i would say there are lots of tools available which makes it easy for you to uh, migrate there are some like even one click migrations available from wordpress uh, wordpress uh, magento where you just need to connect these tools and uh, these uh, connect these two uh, platforms and uh, that these tools will convert the data from uh, these uh, magento and wordpress and convert into format which shopify can read and import all this within one day Uh, hmm. uh, and it uh, uh, and we don't. Uh, it depends actually. So sometimes if it's a very complex, where you know the uh, so we have uh, we have handled uh, projects which had like more than by four four lakh orders and two lakh customers, etc. During that time, we need to make sure that uh, whether all the information which are being which is being exported from Magento or WordPress, etc., is in the format that Shopify also uh, understands, etc. And we need to do some some manipulation around it and then get it. okay so basically so in general would you recommend if you are moving in right would it be something that a person who is not very technical would be able to do or would you recommend that they hire a shopify expert to handle a migration like that if you have a big store with lots of legacy data i think it's better to use an expert to make sure that there is no issues while migrating also we need to make sure one is let's say having migration but also about making sure that you know uh, for the customers when you migrate you need mm -hmm. to switch off the old system and switch on the old, new system and make sure that everything is working etc those things might be, uh, become risky and uh, complex if you are doing on a live store which is living and breathing uh, with lots of mm -hmm. traffic quality coming in and you need to make sure that even your old urls have to be re clean not only redirected so that you don't lose lose any seo juice that has been uh, seo uh, goodwill that has been created over long time Yeah, so you so want you to make sure that yeah, yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. So you want to make sure that uh, all these things are covered. If uh, so, if first of all, whether merchant has the knowledge knowledge of all this stuff, and whether hmm. he or she has that uh, uh, those capabilities, then they can do it on their own. But they, if, 
they need an expert to make sure that they are following all the checklist uh, whether they have whether they have thought about this whether they have thought about that etc and also sure. uh, most of the migrations are also to solve a particular problem so let's say they were not able to do certain things in the old system that they want to do on on shopify and also it's not just migrate it's also about upgrade as yeah. if you are if you are mo- moving to a new platform you also want you are you might as well upgrade your system to better let's say do do customer service or better present a product or better uh, uh, speed etc etc so uh, uh, for, for those that are, so ideally you know if you hire an expert they are they might even be able to give you more more uh, more solutions which can simplify your processes yes uh, so okay so we are talking about moving into shopify but what so one of the things as an engineer or as a software developer we think about is if i'm using a platform am i locked in what if uh today shopify meets my requirements but uh two, two years or four years or five years from now my shop is big and for some reason i need functionality that shopify does not provide and i want to move out uh, how easy is it to get my data out of shopify and migrate to a different platform or migrate to a custom customized platform see for that i believe um, uh, for that i believe for example shopify has readily available tools to migrate on shopify you can definitely get all the data from the shopify but to move on the platform okay. which you are looking for it should also have some tools available to get data from other platforms so none of the sure. platforms that is in the market lock you up There's, nobody can make you hostage sure. when you uh, log into a, any of the system you are free to move in okay. and move out at any point of time but when sure. they are making this experience good for you to move in hmm. the other platform that you are switching to should have the experience of moving in from other platform as well from shopify to uh, i guess magento or wordpress there would have been tools hmm. available so you need to check out for that if there is any tool available and sure. if you want to migrate and for custom if you are doing it custom then definitely it depends on you how you want to put that data back because you can definitely get okay. all the data from the shopify at any point of time sure so here shopify is an american company uh they have been in the indian market for a while but the i guess the question is like how do they understand the unique challenges that are there in the indian market and are those needs generally met by third party integrations or the shopify themselves have any uh any changes or the way they run the business or the way the product works has it been uh, does it fit into the indian market quite well? uh, Shop, Shop, shopify is a canadian company actually uh, okay uh, and yeah it's so what shopify has so shopify does uh, does some uh, things which for especially for indian market and for other uh, other global market uh, other local markets uh, they have some they they do build some personalized tools for example shop in india shop cod is big uh, like co most you might even see uh, 60 70% of orders being placed on cod which is not right. common in uh, different in other markets places. other places yes. so especially for india they built a tool which allows you to uh, restrict cod to certain pin codes and uh, also maybe charge extra money for cod So, okay, so right. Shopify themselves created a plugin, and uh, a plugin that they themselves created a plugin which can which are which is accessible to all the stores who are using INR as a uh, currency. So yes, yeah, does Shopify does do uh, make sure that if it's a if the market is big and uh, if the need is high and they are able to solve it using their own system, they can do it. And also like as a, as Saket already mentioned, there are lots of merchants who solve. Uh, so there are lots of app developers who solve local issues for example let's say if you are uh, if you are selling in china you want to have some go to integrate with chinese uh, suppliers if you are merchant in china you are selling in china you want to have some sort of uh, local chinese uh, integ- say shipping integration you can there if, if the demand is big enough there are lots of app developers who build those type of solutions uh, so that this is true for all geographies not just india uh, but yeah sure. uh, to answer your question about india shopify has built something for india like the advanced cod uh, because there was a, the demand was high you know okay uh, so i have a question from youtube uh, from sanjeev uh, what is the difference uh, between wordpress and shopify so wordpress and shopify more likely both are platform where you can create uh, your online store 
there is a, a WooCommerce powered by Word, WordPress and Shopify is already there. So uh, difference would be in the functionalities and the difference would be in the user experience that is coming in. Different would be in the plugins that is coming in. So it's short of a thing where you can use and decide. Like me selling Shopify to you would not make any sense. And I can definitely give you the key benefits that Shopify is offering. And WordPress on already has uh, certain benefits offering to the market. But you'll only get to know that what Shopify has more than WordPress would be when you start discovering the things. Like for example, there, there are multiple things that make your operation very easy. The uh, plugins that I said, the uh, process of customizing your website, the process of managing the catalog, the reviews, the SEO thing. See, the SEO thing is a very big thing that Shopify is already providing while entering a description there is one more field in the description field where you can write the meta tags, where you can enter how the SEO will look like, like on the on the search page, on the Google search page, how the uh, title and the description will look like. So that can be directly done on the description page itself. So right. having multiple things at one point definitely makes more sense to you uh, uh, if you are trying to get it done from different uh, uh, login screens, from different dashboards actually. Sure. So uh, also if you, uh, like WordPress is content first, uh, the WordPress was a blogging solution actually first. If, like, if, you, are used, if you are a publishing company, uh, you know, if, uh, if, you are, if you are more into content where you are creating uh, content, uh, creative posting uh, post every day, etc. I think but, uh, but, uh, WordPress was designed around that when, when, when it was launched. And like, and also Shopify was designed around e-commerce. So if you, if, if your business is around, let's say, just making sure that you are uh, publishing the best content and e-commerce is an afterthought, then maybe WordPress could be a better solution. Similarly, if, you are, if, if, your, if your business is around e-commerce and, word, and uh, word, the blog is just an additional way of getting traffic, then maybe uh, Shopify would be a better solution for Sanjeev. Uh, if he's looking at uh, two different, uh, comparing these two platforms. Sure. So basically WordPress, if your initial focus is content and Shopify, if your primary focus is e-commerce, right. that would be a recommendation. Yeah. All right. Also like WordPress, you need to, it's not a hosted solution. You also need to think about, uh, you need to maybe hire a developer to actually uh, put your, put WordPress files on your, you need to buy a server place and put, this but it is available also as hosted solution, right? Yeah, yeah. I think they are, they are managed I mean, uh, manage over the solutions also. Yeah. Managed solutions are there, uh, so that should be fine. Yep. Have you, uh, in your experience, right? Have you seen uh, customers who have started on Shopify and then at some point have moved to, to their own platform, uh, and any particular reasons around that, or do you not see much of that happening? Generally, I've not seen much because the, the way Shopify works is, uh, you know, uh, as, as your needs, so as you grow, your needs become more and more complex and Shopify is able to handle those needs by using some plugins or the other. But uh, one, uh, let's say, but uh, one common reason why I normally see people leave Shopify, uh, especially in India, is if you are trying to sell uh, products in international market. Now, Shopify, the checkout, happens in store currency, okay, generally speaking. So let's say uh, uh, I'm selling on INR and the checkout also happens in INR, Indian rupees. Uh, but if you are selling in, let's say USD, US, uh, USA and you want checkout to happen in USD and uh, you are selling in uh, Europe and you want to have one checkout to happen in Euro, etc. There are some tools available which allows you to do those checkouts uh, on those stuff, but 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 sometimes you know they, they you need also some complex solution. If suppose uh, so some people actually leave if, because they are not able to have multiple currencies and multiple they want to have different price for different uh, geography and some complex solution which Shopify cannot power. That's one reason that I've seen. Also, he, uh, also other thing is let's say if you are selling stuff which is not uh, which cannot be. Uh, Let's say some some stuff that maybe Shopify does not allow to sell. Let's say if you uh, currently uh, currently everything is uh, let's let's say uh, let's say government of India decides to so they have to uh, there are two local government rules. Let's say somebody selling uh, alcohol just to give an example, uh, which at the time when shop when Shopify started was there was no rule around it, but uh, after after the government or some uh, local government brings in that tool that you are not allowed to. 
uh, sell alcohol online. Uh, just to give an example, then Shopify will also have to follow the local law and might ask you to please, to leave Shopify. You can't sell uh, restricted products on Shopify. Okay. Uh, then you need to have your own solution. You can't use Shopify. You have to uh, use this. You have to follow this rules. Right. So technically, you can't even use your own solution if you're not allowed any. <laughs> either way. Yeah, yeah. But I know. Yeah, but, <laughs> but people, people will still go ahead. Yeah, I understand. Correct. But at least if you are on WordPress, you you have your own rules, like. In Shopify, right, right, Shopify right. To sure. With Shopify, uh, <laughs> yeah. so one one of the other things uh, that I think you mentioned and that is very, becomes very important is uh, SEO and uh, social uh, or ads on Facebook and on Google. Uh, one thing I'd like to know is a little bit more about how much control you have over SEO, as well as how much control you have over the catalog. For example. I I'm, I have a particular image that I use on my website, but that does that because of the design and of my site, that same image does not fit on the Google ad uh, card, right? On the ad, Google ads or on Facebook ads. So can I customize, like how much customization do I have there, both in terms of SEO and how much control do I have? And how much control do I have over the images that go for the uh, Facebook or Google catalogs? Well, I'll take your first, second question first, which is like, how, how, how much control do I have on Google and ad, Facebook ads? So let's say, take your example, let's say you have, a, uh, you have a particular first image which works for your website and you want to have different image on the ads. Um, the, the direct integration that Shopify has, free integration with Google ads and uh, Facebook ads, will take the same image and send it to the uh, Google ads and Facebook ads. But if you have a sure. slightly complex, uh, uh, different, uh, non-standard requirement, uh, currently it's not available in the uh, in the in the solution that Shopify has made. But there are you can use a third-party tool, something like let's say Data Feed Watch or some process Google Ads. Uh, there are some tools available which allows you to have different uh, image on uh, on these platforms and different image on Shopify. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to use a, a custom bridge between these two different solutions. Uh, and, and just like that, you can also have different title on uh, website and different title on ads. You can have different, uh, 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 maybe you want to have different data on ads. So those, those type of tools are available, which allows, which works, both, which will take data from Sh Shopify and will allow you to make some manipulation and submit it to Google and Facebook uh, ads catalogs. Uh, about SEO, uh, I would say, let's say um, in SEO, normally there are more than, like say there are 200 plus known factors which affects the ranking of a particular website. Mm -hmm. Right from website speed, uh, content, unique content, domain authority, uh, the authority of the uh, of the backlinks, uh, well time, focus checking. There's so many things which affect uh, Shopify, uh, which affects the ranking of a particular content. Um, Shopify, for, because it allows you to edit HTML, first of all, um, Shopify already uh, uh, mandates themes to put the structured data directly into the theme. So uh, almost all the information uh, uh, is easily accessible to Google bot or Bing bot, or whichever, uh, all these uh, bots who are crawling uh, the website. It's already, uh, uh, these they can easily read the data. It's not just by, by going through H1 text. There are also some uh, structured schema markups Already made in into the Shopify uh, in, in Shopify, which these bots can easily read. 